Uh, ja, uh, Ramel. Uh, ik denk dat het een, een goede week voor ons. Uh, obviously, onze bekend Jay-Z gereden is over oefenkamp, zoals al een keer vroeg in Europa. Uh, so, uh, Goeie oefenweek voor week gehad, uh, obviously ons is nie altyd gewoon dat op een zondag jy hem speel nie, uh, so ons het lekker lang weer gehad vir voorbereiding, uh, maar dit het goed gegaan, uh, weer het ons, het ons mooi hanteer, uh, baie, baie opgewonden vir die wester, ons weet Skotland sal een goeie uitdaging weer vir ons, uh, soos wat hulle was laas jaar, by die wereldbeker ook, uh, hulle is altyd een uh, kruidspan hier in, hier in Murrayfield en het altyd een um, goeie, goeie resultaat is, so, so ja, as die wester het wel nog baie uitsien. Uh, ja, ik denk de laatste twee weken. Ik wil heel erg wach. De laatste twee weken, ja, ben je ze ben je gaan kijken hoe ze ze kijken naar ze vinden dat opportunity. Ze kwamen ze om preparatie naar Parijs. Het was een tough week voor de players die toen bij het college en de beste niet daar ende. Maar ze hebben wel eens kwamen ze nog conditie dat laat ze het kijken hoe kom eraan. Zal je dan alleen nog de namens van je weder je bent die fan compared to the Sikali Lens en Zabbega. Zo zie ik wel eens nog hoe voor mij het hoe was ik wel eens hoe ze lo lang gaat. Scotland is een beetje een lens maar ik wil zeggen als gunst en koud dan ook wel. Na een beetje een keer, ik denk dat ze zijn beste preparatie gaat zitten in Scotland toch. Ze hebben al zo wanneer Scotland wanneer players is is die goed, pak u, pak van, pak van, dan doe je een paar mensen, pak kom bolle, van een strong, doe polo, doe captain, wat u, we doe vind dat ze. Ze hebben ze van abu, maar niet opportunity bij de parijs. Zo, ja, ze hebben om de lunzen maar kunnen parken dat kerst is dus een lekker kerst is kunnen leiden. En dat ding zo bij de te vormen. Oké, Richard. Stuart, do you have separate plans for bad weather and good weather, or do you just have a plan A that you think you can implement, whether it's Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, it's going to be a dry day. But once again, we had an uh, uh, extra week in Jersey, you know, where we can prepare and climatize nicely with the conditions, you know. And uh, remember, the first training session was very, very wet and cold. So I don't, I don't think uh, uh, the weather conditions will change how we want to play the game. Uh, we are well prepared, but we also know on the other side also, uh, Scotland, they will try to stop us from implementing our plan. And it's always tough to play them at home. Uh, but once again, I don't think the conditions will really make... Uh, make a difference in how we want to we wanna play the game. Eben, you had a, you got to have a good look at Scotland during the World Cup and obviously that was the Springboks day that day. Do you expect Scotland to throw anything different at you to what you saw in Marseille? Yeah, look, we, we know Scotland is a, is a good team. Uh, they've had a couple of good results in the six nations as well. Um, the team in the URC is doing quite well, so uh, we know they They keep on improving every year and becoming a better team. Uh, we know uh, we certainly contact them lightly and we prepare uh, fully against them and, and we know it's going to be a massive challenge for us in, in all areas. Uh, obviously the kicking game uh, will be a big challenge obviously with the, with the rules changing a bit. Um, we all always know their forwards will be up for it. Um, they've got, they always have good plans come line or some, uh, come scrum time and um, there's also a few South Africans in there that will Try and give them some insight into our camp as well. So um, it's going to be a good challenge for us. Scotland have picked off some big results in recent years, but there's a feeling here that they maybe struggle to take the next step to compete with the likes of yourselves and the All Blacks in Ireland. In your eyes, what do you see that Scotland need to do to, to really compete at that top end of Test rugby? Yeah, uh, if that's the feeling over here, I wouldn't know. It's certainly not the feeling from our camp. Uh, we, we consider them as one of the top nations. Uh, in, in world rugby and we, we see them as an island or or New Zealand or Australia or England we, we play against so um, they're right up there for us and, and it's going to be a physical test match and uh, one we're obviously uh, looking forward to I think Murrayfield is an incredible place to play rugby uh, personally probably one of my favorites in the world uh, love coming here playing here Scottish people are, are nice uh, but we know they their team will never be nice with us on the field uh, because that's a that's a test match and they will Try to get one on us. So uh, now we, we're all excited for, for the challenge that lies ahead. Yeah, but this is possibly the strongest bench in the history of world rugby. As a captain who's on the field from the start, how reassuring is it to know that you've got such quality to come and, and help you out of a spot if you are a few points behind? Yeah, <laughs> um, on paper, obviously, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a good bench, uh, but we, we always say in this team, you, games are never won on paper. Uh, you can't really. 
do anything until until the game starts. So we we will see what once they come on. I don't know when, but uh, once they do come on, do they make a difference? And and the guys on the bench now, it, it won't just happen. Um, obviously, Scotland's also got a got a quality bench that they would also like to come on and make a difference. Um, so. Yeah, we, we, we expect our guys to come on and make a difference. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's up to them to to take that into reality tomorrow and, and bring what they what they can to the field. What's the dynamic between you and Sia? If Sia comes on, does he take over all the leadership responsibility? Or are you still the captain and still very much in charge on that? Uh, yeah, we, we'll have to see. We'll uh, still discuss that one. Uh, but to be fair, it doesn't really matter. I think me and Sia has always worked together on and off the field very nicely. Um, it's, it's probably the one who just speaks to the ref a bit more, uh, but but in the decisions we always try to come together and try and make a decision together. So it won't really change much whether whether I'm staying captain when he comes on or if it changes that he's captain. Rex, with all the uh, chat about the seven one and, and great bench and so on, I mean, how do you think the last sort of five ten minutes is where this game could be, you know, could be decided? Yeah, I think it's going to be a tough game. Like I, like I mentioned earlier on, it's always tough to play against Scotland at, at Murrayfield. But uh, I think for us, the, the focus is not only on the last 20 minutes or last 10 minutes of the game. We want to start well. We want to make sure that uh, we implement our plan and make sure that we execute it. You know, and uh, Scotland also, they've got their own plan on the other side. And we know how they play. You know, they want to keep the ball in hand. So they'll probably want to speed up things. So I don't think we're going to wait until the last 10 minutes for us to have a, to make a, a difference in the game. You know, if we can win the game from the first, probably 20 minutes, I think the team that will start well will probably have a chance to keep that momentum. We don't want to uh, wait for the last probably uh, minutes of the game, you know. And uh, like I said again, uh, if we go with the mindset where you're not going to pitch up against them, you've got Finn Russell on the other side, you've got Duan, you've got those guys at the back, uh, 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 to Polo, to those uh, world-class players with the X factor. So you give them, uh, you switch off against them, they will punish you. And like even touch on it again, they've got a coaching staff that is very, very creative about how they go about with their so with their with their plans. So if you you're not really going to be mentally up for the game, you're going to get punished. Uh, in all my experience against them when we played Murrayfield, if you remember, even the last game we played against them, yeah, it was a hassle in the first half. It was always going to be tough, you know. So hopefully. We can start well, but otherwise, I think, like Eben said, from 1 to 23, everyone has got a role to play. I think those guys also that are starting to be nice for also to have a massive impact in the game. Given, given the quality of Scotland's bats, you know, uh, you guys have great bats as well, but just given that that's probably general consensus where really their strength is, I mean, you, how important do you think it is to sort of put a squeeze on them? Yeah, it's, uh, I think. In a rugby game, all, everything starts by the forwards besides probably the kickoff. Uh, I think the, the liners will always start when the hooker throws a ball in, which is forward, and obviously the scrum is a set piece at the forward start. So um, most most of the matches these days probably gets it's one on loss up front with the forwards, and um, we, we know we've got a big responsibility. And um, I also think that's that's why Coach Ross is selected. Um, the seven one one split because we've got respect for for Scotland and we we see them as a good team, a good back of forwards and, and we know we we're gonna have to be at our best to beat them. Um, so yeah, we we're looking forward to it. Um, it's definitely gonna come down to a to a great forward bat, battle and then obviously the backs can um, can have some fun out wide. Uh, both the backs uh, they they have got a bit more space. Yeah, the, um, just going back to the seven one um, bench. You know, I was talking to Rassi the, the other day about it and, and the, the fact that the, a lot of the guys on the bench are usually starters, your Peter Stitch, your Sears. How do you think that dynamic's going to change for them now operating a different role within that bomb squad? And then also for the guys on the field, is, is there an acceptance on a weekend like this that if, you, if you're not doing your thing, you know, there's every chance that you could come off even a first half substitution if you're not up to kind of standards? Is that always the case? Or is it even more so now given the quality that is on the bench? I think that's always the case. I think if, um, if the coaching staff in the box see, sees you're not really productive on the field anymore, you can get subbed after 10 minutes um, if, you, if you're really not doing your job anymore. So that's always been been there. Uh, that, will, that will never change. I don't think it will be a bigger highlight this weekend because of the quality we've got on the bench. And then, um, yeah, guys like Peter Steff and, and, and see those guys are not always on the bench, but it's a very experienced guy in Vincent Koch who, 
who and Ergesneimer and Malcolm who makes the whole uh, bench bomb squad thing a, a big thing and then they welcome those guys in and they're excited to have quality players with them on the on the bench uh, but also a big role for the guys starting uh, I think there's also some guys who doesn't always start all the test matches so it's a, a good um, opportunity for them to show what they can do when starting against a quality side. I mean, Peter Stepp, uh, you know, 18-minute 